Rob, you want to start? Expectation to wrap this up. I'm Will Rothenberg. I'm doing well. Uh, no time constraints. Uh, missing uh, for the district side is noted. I can't read the the two spout people that are are not here. Um, no elephants and uh, expectation um, orange circles. Good evening. I'm Heather Leonard. I'm doing well this evening. I have no time constraints, um, no elephants, and expectations. I'll go with orange circles. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Kelvin. I'm doing well. I have no time constraints. Missing has been noted. I have no elephants and expectations are come to an agreement. Good afternoon, I'm Bonnie McFarland. I'm doing well. I have no time constraints past our seven o'clock ending time. Uh, missing is noted, no elephants and expectation or circles. Hello everybody, I'm Jason Kurtz and I'm doing well. I don't have any time constraints. Missing has been noted. Um, an elephant. I've gotten my wife anything for Valentine's Day yet. Whoops. Um, and my expectation is to come to some agreements. Good evening. My name is Roger Lloyd. I'm doing well. I do have time constraints today. It'll be about um, 4.45. Um, hopefully we can wrap it up by then. Um, missing has been noted. Um, Trying to see through it. There we go. I do not have any elephants, and uh, let's make some progress tonight. I'm Shannon Johnston. I'm doing great. No time constraints. Missing's been noted. No elephants. And expectations is to come to an agreement. Uh, I'm Teresa Bowen. I'm doing well. Um, I have no time constraints, no elephants. And I am hoping to come to an agreement. My name is Candy Messenger. Um, I'm doing well. I have no time constraints. Missing has been noted, no elephants, and my expectation is to come to an agreement. Hi, good evening. I'm uh, Kerfazo. That was probably me when I go into one of these speakers. I'm a chief negotiator for the union. I'm doing fine. Will, this is really, really loud. Uh, I have no time constraints. Missing is Lewis and Jimmy on our side. No elephants, expectation, uh, make progress. Good evening, my name is Lois DeBay. I am fine. No time constraints. Missing has been noted. No elephants and expectations just to make progress. Good evening, I am Arlise Williams. I'm doing well. Uh, time constraints, seven o'clock. Um, missing has been noted. No elephants and expectation. Make progress. 
I'm Roger Wilson, I'm doing fine. No time constraints, who's missing has been noted. No elephants, expectations, make progress. Good afternoon, my name is Patrice Coates. I am great, no time constraints. Missing has been noted, no elephants. And the same as everyone else, let's make some progress. Missing people have noted. No elephants and expectations make progress. Good afternoon. My name is Chris Cox. I'm doing well. I have no time constraints. Missing has been noted. Uh, no elephants. And I'd like to make progress as well. All right. Michelle? I'm Michelle Robinson. I'm doing well. I have no time constraints. Missing has been noted. No elephants. And I would like to make progress. And good afternoon. I'm Donna Mutzenart. I'm doing well. I have time time constraints, and my expectation is to help you make all of those expectations tonight. Uh, there was talc. I think it should be spalk, if I'm not mistaken. General employment practices. It's talking about transportation. Is that correct? Should it have been? We're fifth with those corrections. May I see thumbs, please? Thank you, everyone. Approved. All right, the only other thing on the agenda tonight is compensation. And we for, um,
enhancements that we would like to propose be used for longevity pay to assist with compression. And if you recall, last session, Kerr and others, including Will, discussed compression and the explanation behind that and how people um, have been squeezed essentially to make maybe the same amount of money that people with a lot less time in the district are making. So that's why we would look, like to focus on longevity pay. That's a $2 million sum of money. We then have approximately $5 million from unfilled vacant positions to allocate towards bonuses for this year, um, essentially in the amount of $1,200 per employee. So that's our, as Kelly walks in the door, <laughs> that's our um, proposal, if you will, or plan. All right. Anything else from anyone? Uh, Kerr. Do you have an idea of how to spread out the, or how to distribute the two million for longevity? I think um, my capable director here to my right has the chart. So I think, can we project that one? the Jeopardy theme? years in the district not consecutive so you could have worked for the district at one point left like I did and come back so it's your cumulative years not consecutive years and I would like to point out that um, it's Depending on the amount of years you've been here, it's it's fairly lucrative. I mean, we're talking increases from twenty five hundred dollars to sixty two hundred dollars for people that have been here up to thirty year of thirty years or more, and then it goes down from there. But it's still considerable. Any questions? Okay, I would like to um, for us to have a conversation about um, the longevity pay and a lump sum versus how it's split up here. Um, if I recall, we agreed last year that we will come back and visit it because um, some people did not want to receive it. Um, spread it out. They wanted to receive it the way that they have it now. Um, well, the way that it was before um, uh, it got spread it out because you have um, some people are only working. Um, okay, some people are only working. Don't work during the summer. So when they're coming back um, for transportation, um, they don't get a regular paycheck until like September fifteenth. So that 
longevity in August was was helping people out a great deal. And um, we said we would come back and, and, and discuss it. So um, my thought was, um, can we um, do some kind of option for people to um, see if they want it in a, a lump sum versus, you know, uh, paying it out. Um, I understand that it's going towards retirement and stuff like that. Because some people it work for, whether it's a single parent or someone that don't make that much money and they're just trying to pay the bill, they rather have it in that lump sum versus, you know, spread it out. Because when you spread it out, you absolutely don't see it. You know, and if it's the point that somebody is trying to have a paycheck for that month, um, they probably, I mean, it, it just don't matter to them what it's going towards. They just know in August they're not going to have a paycheck, and they just prefer to give um, that longevity uh, in August. So, I mean, if we can maybe give options or if it could go back to the employees getting the longevity and that lump sum in the August and everybody else that's coming in, um, would get it spread out or whatever. Um, kind of like grandfathering the uh, the employees in that already have it. Let 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 it be an option for them because that is a long time not to have a paycheck. Okay. Any response to that, Rob? I, I do recall saying we would discuss it, so we're certainly, obviously, willing to do that. Um, I don't think our reasoning for um, asking for it to be spread out last year has changed. I mean, we would like individuals to accrue retirement in the most lucrative way they can. So, especially folks that are with the district this length of time. I mean, hopefully a lot of them are going to retire from the district. So, um, and these increases in amounts will certainly help their retirement. The other thing is, on the upper edges of this, they will see that in their paycheck. I know Arlise mentioned you don't see it. Well, an additional $2,500 a year or $5,000 a year, you're going to notice that in your paycheck. I mean, it may be hundred two hundred dollars more paycheck but that's significant so um, we have the same interest in having it spread out but I'm not shutting down the conversation I'm not saying that at all I heard Arlie say several things about different options so but I would have to have our, our finance people weigh into Kevin and Kelly because <laughs> this affects their everyday work so okay Any, is, is, do you want an option up there, Arlise, that says that um, employees would have be able to choose if they want lump sum or spread over? Okay. It, I, I don't want to put uh, finance and payroll on the spot, but are there? I'm sure there's tax implications or payroll implications for that. If if it's paid as a lump sum, is, is that considered as to be paid as a one-time bonus versus? Um, uh, as a, uh, what's the word we use, uh, component of pay? If, if it's paid out as a lump sum, it becomes a bonus and it's not eligible for retirement at that point because it's a bonus. So that would be less towards the retirement um, for those employees. Okay, thank you. Kevin, anything to add about that? I didn't want to state it publicly, but I don't know how I'm going to do that. So, um, but we'll figure it out. Um, that's why we bargain. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Anything else from over here? Yeah. Uh, you got to wait for the mic, Tony. Being is that I am one of those people that. I am going to be retiring from here. It will be 35 years when I retire next year. That longevity pay was an incentive for me when I first started to, to come back every year. 
because like Arlie said, I was a single parent where I didn't work throughout the summer unless I had a second job. And if I did it, I wasn't able to pay all of my bills at that time. So when I came back to work, that check pulled me out of a hole at, versus me um, paying my rent and not being evicted. That was one of the incentives for me that I looked at when I was first started. But as I said, I will be retiring next year. Okay, thank you, Tony. Chris or Kerr, can you have something? Okay, pass it on to Chris, please. <coughs> I was uh, wondering if you guys would give consideration back to the market rate, as you kind of alluded in the beginning, that bring some of these jobs up, up to speed, uh, especially the maintenance department. Is that is that a consideration in addition to this this proposal? Go ahead, Rob. It's it's not, um, and that's only because of the intervening issues we've had with the hurricane and, and the available funds that we've given authority with. Um, I think there's some desire to bargain relatively soon after we finish, so um, moving forward. So Chris, no, I, I don't have a positive answer to your question relative to this. We were trying to concentrate on help, helping with um, the compression issue by helping with longevity. So, I just wanted to point out, you can see the numbers of SPALC employees in each category at the bottom there also. So there's 371 in 10 to 14 years, and then the largest is 469 folks, 15 to 19. Kerr? Oh, Will, while Kerr's getting the mic, go ahead. An another thing, just... Um, hang on. Or, or another two things. The the numbers that are up there right now, um, that's with the, the current amount. So if you're looking at that that 1.4 1.5 million total, that's with the the current amount that's spent in longevity. Um, obviously, that would increase if you went with the increased amounts. Um, but that, like Rob said, is to give you an idea of of kind of the breakdown. One one other thing, and I know we had talked about this at at bargaining um, last year was there were a number of people on the higher end of um, of that longevity scale that that retired and I think that one of the one of the thoughts is that by providing this additional um, longevity that that might help with retention of, of more experienced employees um, who have a lot of that institutional knowledge um, because again, you know, for, for people with uh, 30 or more years, it's, it's almost a $4,000 um, increase in, in longevity that they would see from year to year. Thank you. Kirk? Sorry, I can't write and think and talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday. So, Ron, just to clarify, so far. What, what I understood was this was increased bargaining authority for this year, and right. the district would then want to come back relatively soon once there's maybe what budgets uh, for next year to talk about next year's compensation? Well, I think moving forward, because we have a contract, right? So, um, yes, and I think um, Kelly can speak better to this, but um, we had her speak, I think, two weeks ago about the tax receipts and how we're behind millions and millions of dollars and we're hopeful the legislature will help us get back on our feet again and all of that and we're hopeful that we know something about that um, rel relatively soon I, I mean it's the legislative session starts in March so um, we're hoping with that we know something more so then the board authority that we would seek or that you would seek would be for the 23-24 school year that we that we still need to negotiate for, correct? Well, you have to help me with this because I think the current contract is for 23-24, right? 
we we had a two year pay deal for 21 22 and 22 23 okay all right so yes okay all right i just wanted to make sure um are there if there are no other questions i, I think i'd like to caucus for all right they may be all right let will and then we'll go to caucus okay I, I think you you hit on the point too that this this is for FY23. I, I also want to just acknowledge because I know Chris had brought up the the point about market rate um, for for different positions. I think I think for FY24 there's still the opportunity to have that conversation about how you address some of some of the compression issues that way. I think this is given everything going on with the hurricane, a way to do something now for um, for employees with the hope that um, you know, once the legislative session is over, we maybe have a clearer picture of what things might look like July 1st and moving forward from there. And, and just another point of clarification, um, so SPALC employees do have the ability to do a lump sum payment um, at the at the um, start of the summer or have their pay continue throughout the summer. I think the one employee group that would be different is transportation since they're on a 20 pay. So just to, to bring that up, that's, that's another factor that I think um, could add to what, what you all were describing at that uh, end of summer um, you know, gap and and payer or cash flow issue that, that a lot of people experience. Okay, you ready to caucus? Yeah, I just want to uh, say this before we caucus. Well, um, that's not going to be a good idea because those people can't afford it. I, I, I mean, they cannot afford for a percentage of their pay you know is being held back and then they're going to get that money you know the end of they can't afford it you know i i, I mean the drop you know two three hundred dollars to drop a hundred dollars at this point off of your paycheck you know that's huge you know that 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 might be you know you can't even buy groceries that week so yeah Okay, caucus, how long, approximately? 20 minutes. Okay. District, are you going to caucus? Okay.
So we had um, we had a lot of conversation around the option. Um, we had a conversation around uh, being able to add something additional to folks' pockets in this year, um, especially with as hard of a year as it's been for a lot of folks, um, and being able to uh, use some money to respect uh, people's time with the with the employer, uh, which you know a lot of people. I mean that's that's a respect thing, and, you know. They, these are some uh, big numbers. Um, we'd like to. I, I told them the history was. I think the goal has been to maybe move to um, uh, a goal of thirty years or more, a ten thousand uh, dollar figure, and this gets us close. Um, and we had a lot of discussion around lump sum payment versus uh, component pay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think we would like to propose a, a straw design. Are, are those options numbered or um, are they listed as options? No, but they yeah. can be. She just she wrote them separately. She just didn't put numbers aside. So we would like to propose a straw design of options one and two. concerned because we're kind of getting later on the clock here so um, and I'm concerned because of your ability to ratify our ability to get it to the board so payroll doesn't have isn't crunched frankly we have the same issue with talc so um, we could try our best that that's at this point because we don't have currently a meeting for our board to approve because we know you can't, your your ratification for TALC is the 15th, 14th and 15th. So I don't know when you would do SPALCs and then we have to have the meeting after that. Theoretically, our board could approve before. There's nothing preventing us, but that's not how we've really done it in the past. We did it last year, I think, because of your snafu with the oh, yeah. ballots. <laughs> Yeah. So, do you have kind of a time frame, Kirk? Yeah, I'm looking now. Um, we have to give our folks uh, at least 10 days notice. I do two weeks. Um, spring breaks the week of the 20th of March. So, I think we would be able to ratify the week of the 27th. So, that may push payment back till the 15th of April. Sounds that way, yes. Uh, as long as we have a tentative agreement by. I'd like to send it out to everyone by the 10th. Oh wait, no, the 13th is, yeah, the March 10th, Friday, March 10th. Are you 
I'll ask you off offline something. And so I'm I'm assuming I'm I'm glad we're talking about this because there Spouse in an interesting situation with signing that two year deal last year. So we would be ratifying the ESSER bonus that's paid on March thirty first, the uh, the board contribution the bonus that's now we're talking about April fifteenth, longevity and the board contribution to employee health insurance would all need to be ratified under this. So I, I would right. recommend. I think we had performance about. evaluation language too that we agreed to. Okay. Chapter eight was that? I mean, Will was on. That's right. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Will? Just, just to be clear, and I, I wasn't sure. Is it, it sounds like there might be a need for for flexibility for the date. Um, and I know we're not bargaining on behalf of of Talc, but um, I, I wasn't sure if Kurt, what you were saying was like you guys might be open to having the the payment later if it all goes at once, or if it if it needs to all go at the same time, or if that's something that you want to talk about in terms of implementation and, and figure out what's realistic and what's possible for Talc and Spalc, um, rather than. One gets paid one week and the next gets paid the next week or, or paid period. I think it would be confusing to have both ratifications going on at the same time. Um, and so uh, I, and I believe we already have the materials ready to go on the talc side for the 14th and 15th. So I, I don't I don't think we'd be able to do them both at the same time without pushing that other one back, and I, I don't think I want to do that. Anything else, Rob? No, I, I think some of this conversation can happen outside of bargaining, not relative to spout, but to the other board. I don't really want to right confuse right. the two. Right. So okay, but it is unique that we're kind of getting done. Right at the same time with both bargaining yes. units. Yes. The option doesn't have those amounts, so I didn't know if we just wanted to make sure that that was on there. Yeah, we need to. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, I can't see it. No, we didn't put the amounts because it's up here. But maybe we could get a chart. copy of the chart. And the other amount's $1,200. That's not that's there. That's on yeah, that's there. on there. The 1200 is on there. Just per the charts. Right. Yeah, just put per the charts. We're not going to recopy the, all those charts. Per. I also want to make sure that this, uh, the longevity would be paid prospectively throughout the, the end of the year. Okay. Yes. And I know uh, we can talk about this later, but just to put a bug in your ear, it may be best to put all the financials in an MOU, ratify that, and leave performance evaluations for the the contract that we're currently negotiating. But okay, that's just a, I mean, we can talk about that. You're going to talk about that in labor management, or yes, okay. yes, Kevin. Depending on ratification, uh, prospectively, so if it's pushed out, that uh, every pay period rate would be larger. Yes. So the further it's pushed out, um, it's still going to be larger than the normal pay period rate. So coming uh, the next school year, it's going to lower. I don't want to set a precedent um, that that's going to be expected because that annual amount will be divided by all pay periods, not the remaining pay, uh, pay periods. Understood, and we're already working on a communication so that uh, people are aware that their longevity payments will be less next year uh, than, than they are now. Okay. Yeah. Anything else in regards to that? Rob? No, I'd like to test. Okay. Everybody ready to test? All right, we have options one and two, and of course that includes what's up on the screen on the chart. 
Um, and two million for enhancements for longevity, which is for compression. Five million from unfilled vacant positions for bonuses, approximately twelve hundred dollars per employee. Um, and those are our two options. So, can we see thumbs for those two compensation options? All right, got your orange. All right, we did it. Um, anything else? We talked about some of the implementation as far as ratification. What about uh, tentative agreement language? Is labor management going to work on that? Yeah, and leadership, yeah. And well, leadership? Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's not a whole lot of language, I don't think. No, so. I don't think we did a whole lot of language, but just the tweaks and things that were done. All right, anything else we need to cover? Not tonight. Not tonight? Rob, are you good for tonight? I am. And thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, we did a good job, and um, good luck with ratification. It is 5.49. We are done. So good work, everyone. Thank you.